now he's got to be able to come out, you know, uh, take that short throw when, when it's there, boom, you know, confidently do it. You know, we've seen the great guys go out there right away. They start off short. They get into a rhythm. Bing, 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 bing. Hey, score. Bing, 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 bing. Score. You know, we see these guys do that. I mean, how many times have we seen Brady do that? You know, same thing with Aaron Rodgers. Go out there, just pick the other team apart because they come out, they know what you're going to be in right away. When they come up the line, they know what you're in. They know the defense you're playing. So then they're able to attack areas of weakness in that defense, and they do it very confidently. Let's bring in my friend Gary Cobb from Fox 29. Gary, you don't get credit for working hard and showing up on time in the NFL. Man, that's a given, especially at the quarterback position. Without a doubt. I mean, it's, you know, when people start talking that way, you know, I just back off because, you know, it's you got to produce. You got to produce on the NFL level, especially at the quarterback position, especially when you got all these elite quarterbacks. You know, that's that's what it is. Everybody that signed up for it, that want to play quarterback, they know there's a lot of pressure on that position, a lot of requirements, and really the game today has has gone up higher because the quarterbacks are protected. They're protected by the rule book, and you've got some elite guys there that have taken things up a few notches and, you know, we, we usually applaud that when things are taking up a few, a few notches with the guards of quality of play. So, hey, this is the rules. This is what's set up. And you got to be able to uh, compete with the big boys. What they say, if if, uh, if you can't run with the big boys, then grab a seat over there. <laughs> Gary, what did you make of Chris Sims? Uh, here, here was my problem ranking him 25th. Chris Sims had Daniel Jones and had Justin Fields and he had, he, he had, Oh yeah. Zach Wilson ranked ahead of him. Yeah. That was my problem. Do you think that the national perception of Jalen hurts is he's not a stiff, but they don't really have a high opinion of him as the future of the football team. And right. Am I right? When I say that, well, there's, you know, there's a national perception yeah. It's not very strong on him. I, I don't know if it's the whole national perception. You know, I, I think that they do look at him and they that he he's not on that elite level. I mean, and he hasn't performed on the elite level. I don't think he would say that he's performed on the elite level, especially when you get in a playoff game like the one against Tampa and you, you don't get it done, you know, and it looks like it's over your head right now. See, uh, that's what we saw in that Tampa game. You know, and a lot of times, once, once you get into the big game, that's what everybody says, okay, it's on the line. Can you compete with the big boys? And he, he, he was not able to get it done. So I think in fairness, and I'd even, I would think that we sat him down and say, hey, what are the things you need to improve on? I think if we were honest, I might, he might not want to do this publicly. But he would, if he's honestly, if the coach is critiquing him, he'd come in and admit, hey, this is where I'm at. This is what I've got to I've got to do better if I want to run with the big boys. And now we're going to see if he can because he's got the he's got the weapons. Now he's got to be able to come out, you know, uh, take that short throw when when it's there. Boom, you know, confidently do it. You know, we've seen the great guys go out there right away. They start off short. They get into a rhythm. Bing, 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 Bing. Hey, score. Bing, 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 Bing. Score. You know, we see these guys do that. I mean, how many times have we seen Brady do that? You know, same thing with Aaron Rodgers. Go out there, just pick the other team apart because they come out, they know what you're going to be in right away. When they come up the line, they know what you're in. They know the defense you're playing. So then they're able to attack areas of weakness in that defense, and they do it very confidently. And it's like it's not even a big deal. You don't even see a lot of celebrating because they're going, look, we're picking you apart, man. This is not, we knew we were going to do this. And see, once you start getting to that kind of confidence where quarterback comes out there and everybody's expecting, the defense is getting ready to get sliced up. So he gets the slicing with his knife. 
Guys are yawning on the sideline. <gasps> Hurry up and get this over. You know, th this thing is not even, you know, nobody's celebrating a lot in the end zone. When they score, hey, hey, good one, you know, come back, a little tap, you know. That's when we know, when they start getting into, when he can flow like that, bing, 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 bing. You know, he, he's he's got to know, and really, one of the big things, which it's really not, it's not that hard to do, but seems like a lot of people have trouble with it, which is take the check down, man. Don't force it. Take the check down. If they're giving that to you, boom. You get it to the guy quickly. You throw an accurate throw. A good running back catches it on the run. And that's a tough tackle. He's going to get eight, nine, ten yards a lot of times. Brady has mastered that. You know, Rodgers has mastered that. The great quarterbacks, they're able to do that. I mean, and um, and then they're able to be patient. See, can you be patient? Because you can't be turning the ball over. You don't get to join the club if you're, you're turning the ball over. Gary, how about this one here? What player on that offense, not named Jalen Hurts, has to have a giant year for this team to reach all the goals that they want? What player do you – do you look at is it the group of the old line is it Dallas Goddard is it AJ Brown is it Devontae Smith who in your in your estimation do you think has to have that year for this team to reach those goals and really those predictions that people are saying this team could potentially have in 2022 well you know I think you know AJ Brown needs to play like he's capable of playing the way he's been playing he if he has a big year, it really is going to put defenses in real bad position because they've got such a running game with that offensive line. And so if you're not stopping him, it's going to be trouble for a defense because a lot of times you got to commit one way or the other. You know, if you're going to commit to double teaming a wide out, then you really can't put a defense together that's really strong against the run. You know, you really got to choose one or the other. That's why I think he was such an excellent acquisition because he, he's so strong that he's a very tough one-on-one -on -one matchup for a, a lot of the cornerbacks, meaning that he he, kept, he gets the ball in his hands. However, now they got their work cut out for him to get this guy on the ground because he's a grown man. He's really a running back. He, he, he's like, um, he's like a, a big, strong running back. So when he gets the ball out in open field, He's the worst kind of guy. You got to now. You got to tackle this guy. This guy can straight arm you anytime. If you don't get him good, he's gonna run. He's gonna run through your tackle and everything. So I think that if they are able to get the ball in his hands, because a lot of times you can do it where you don't even really need anything elaborate. Just get the ball in his hands with the blocker in front of him. A lot of times, you know. So like those quick screens and stuff. He's going to be tough to, to deal with on that, especially when you've got that running game staring at you. So it's a lot of times you got to pick you got to pick a defense that's going to take one of them away. You're going to either double him or you're going to say, OK, we're going to stop this running game. But it's going to be very difficult to do all of the above. And then with some of the other guys they got out there, all they got to do is just. Just be efficient, you know, take what people give. Take what they give you. Don't be trying to force things. That, and that's what Jalen, man, take what they give you. You don't need to be really forcing anything in. And because if you take what they give you, you got people um, and, and they're running backs. And, and, and that's one of the things they should be working on it, where they can get the ball and throw, throw accurate, catchable balls to your running backs because – if they catch the ball on the run, it's, it's very difficult. I mean, we've seen this with the great quarterbacks. Montana used to do this. He was the first to do that. Where he's just throwing little check downs, but he throws them accurately, gets the ball to the guy on the run. And those are tough plays for guys to tackle the guys without them getting any decent yardage. And if you stay out of the third and long, if you stay out of those, it's a lot of pressure on the defense. Really tough. You know, but but if you are forcing things and you're getting sacked, you're holding on to the ball, you're not taking what they give you, then you wind up getting sacked. Now it's third and long. Third and long, a defense can get off the field on third and long. Third and short, if a, a good offense is hard to get off the field on third and short. Gary, who do you have more questions for 
um, this year, Nick Sirianni or Jalen Hurts? Well, it's, it's probably Jalen. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I think it's almost like – Do you still like, you know, have question marks on Nick? I got question marks on Nick. I do have question marks on him because, you know, I, I think that um, some of the things he said, you know, like he's got he's to have a hand on the defensive side of the ball. He can't just say, hey, this other guy's coaching the defense. Look, you're the head coach. You're charge of the defense too. You got to know what's going on over there. I thought sooner he could have put some pressure on them to say, hey, look, we got to tighten things up over there. And, you know, sometimes he got to go in uh, the, the, the post-game uh, news conference or, uh, or the Monday. He's got to come out and he got to call it like it is, you know, on the defense because he's in charge of both. So I do have questions for Nick. It's just that um, Jalen's part is, is uh, I think, more important because I think Nick has shown us that, you know, he has a certain level of ex expertise. And then it's just a matter of execution because. But, you know, you know, Gary, I, I, you, you, you mentioned the most important thing that a quarterback can have is patience. And mm -hmm. that's the one thing. Like, you know what? When I think of Brady and I think of Rodgers and then I look at even Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes and Rodgers don't have the patience that Brady has. You're right. Like you said, Brady will take a three and out. He'll take a punt, and yeah. he'll think that that's a positive play, whereas yeah. those other two will look at it as a failure. I'm wondering if Syria – because I think Jalen's got the patience to understand that. Yeah. I'm wondering if a guy who's more comfortable – because remember, here was the offensive coordinator when Phillip Rivers was in Indy. And they won 11 ball games throwing with that style. And that style pretty much is what he's comfortable in. Uh -huh. Is he also going to have the patience to be able to stick with that style? Because you, you would agree, there's going to be a lot of three and outs early when we're looking at the develop Jalen and what they're going to try to accomplish. Because if they're going to move off of running the ball 38 mm -hmm. times, Gary, you got to be patient. Because there's going to be three and outs with A.J. Brown out there. If you're trying to get him targets, there's going to be double teams out there. Yeah, You're going to have to have a lot of patience in here with this offense. Well, I would agree. But, see, I, I think, though, and, and this is where we're getting in again. We get back to Jalen, where a lot of times what they do now is they let the quarterback pretty much call the plays. So that means he comes up, okay, they're stacked up against our running game. Okay, I'm going to take this out here. I'm going to go ahead and take five, six yards. Now, you got to be accurate with the throw. But a lot of times he's going to be calling the play at the line of scrimmage, you know, and he can get, he can, uh, he can change things, you know, early in the downs, you know. So that's why the quarterbacks, because a lot of times the quarterbacks like Brady and, um, you know, the guys with the experience, they really let them call the, the plays. I mean, he called the play at the line of scrimmage. They have a lot of check with me's now so that the defense is really in a situation where they got to commit. If you go three wide out, okay, you you pretty pretty much is a, a guarantee that you're going to say, okay, we're really playing a pass defense right now. Okay. Now, the Eagles love running in that situation. They figure, hey, you put those guys out there, we can run the ball on you all day long. Now, that's the kind of situation where I think they're ready to do that right now. I don't think there's going to be um, – uh, you know, where this offense starts off and they're, they're struggling now. I think that they are comfortable because they really, with A.J. Brown, they really put defenses really in a tough situation because they, they're they going to have those quick screens all year for him. You know, you know, and a lot of times they'll call that the line of scrimmage. If you got two guys over there, hey, they feel good. One guy's playing off. We feel good about throwing A.J. Brown the ball. Now that little DB's got to tackle him. So that's tough because um, Tennessee did a lot of that with him too because he, he really puts a lot of, you know, strain on the defense because he creates matchup problems because he's so strong that, you know, you need a linebacker to take, tackle a guy like A.J. Brown, you know, because he's so big and strong. A DB, he, he's going to have a struggle uh, getting him down, especially without letting him gain some. He's going to gain some yards. Let me, let me let me throw this at you, Gary. A couple last questions here for you here. I had Hollis Thomas on this last Friday, and, and this is the first time I had ever heard this. And I asked him about Andy Reid, and Hollis called him snake shit. 
and said that he was a guy that was kind of a, of a bullshit artist. And, you know, he had his guys in the room sometime. Uh-huh. And he would say one thing and do another. And one of the issues that he had was once Andy had a little say and more say in Philly when it came to personnel, that's when the football team started going the other way. And he's seeing the same thing going on in Kansas City, that there's lesser – there's clearly lesser talent today than there was when they won the Super Bowl. Yeah, true. I want to get your thoughts on that. I mean, he's the first player I had ever heard that played for Andy that had any kind of negative comments about him. Um, it could be a disgruntled player. We know this. Sometimes, you know, you know, if you have 52 guys, not everybody in the building is going to be happy with <laughs> that's you. That's right. So yeah. it could be that. And I'm not, I'm not dismissing anything he's saying because that's his personal relationship with him. But yeah. just as an overall look. How was Andy Reid, you think, received with players in that locker room in his tenure there? Well, for the most part, you know, he was he was in good, you know, he had a good relationship with all the guys, you know. Um, uh, I, I don't think with everybody, but uh, he clearly had good relationship with guys. Uh, I don't know that I would say through a whole roster that he had great, um, the great ability to evaluate all the positions, but he knows quarterbacks. You know, did he got, ever say on defense? Did did he do one of the things that I can say, I can tell you don't like? Yeah. That he left the defense to Jimmy to Jim Johnson. Yeah, he did, he, he did he, do that. He, he handled the offense, and he had more of a relationship with the offensive guys. And that's maybe kind of sometimes what you're talking about, yeah. where a coach has to be vested on that other side of the football yeah. for them to be really on the same page. Maybe that's what we're talking about here. Do you agree? I, I would agree with that. He, he was off. He's an offensive guy. There's no doubt about that. And he left the defense up to, to Jim Johnson. And without a question, he was closer. There were some of the star players like, you know, Brian Dawkins and a few other guys he was close to. But he really was close. He was he's an offensive guy. That's, he, he, his mind all the time. You know, uh, people talk about him drawing up plays in the middle of the night. He's drawing up plays. You know, he's he's that kind of guy. You know, uh, give him up, give him a good meal, and he's drawing up plays and he's happy. You know, that's what Andy was. And so, without a doubt, he he's more of an offensive guy, and he and the defensive guys are not going to be as close with him and everything. But you know, uh, you, you know, the thing with Andy is you win, and it's yeah. all about winning. You know, I that's why I um. I, I could understand him stepping back. Now, ultimately, you know, he was calling the shots, but he wasn't doing the detail on the defense. He he was designing the offense. He was deciding on what was going to happen to do with the offense. He lived, ate, and breathed offense. So that's without a doubt, he was not uh, working as much with the defense. Finally here, I, I, I asked Hollis this question too, and I'm going to ask you. You think there's – Now, did you get uh, Hollis any food? Well, I'll tell you what, man, between me and him, I think we could tip the Toledos. Hey. Dude, I th- hey, we'd be, we, we, we might be giving money back. Hey. <laughs> hey, Hollis can put it away. Hey, no, no, he, he was telling me. He, he goes, hurry up. I want to get this done because I won't make me an egg sandwich with some sausage. And I said, hey, we've got two more questions here. <laughs> but, hey, finally here. Yeah. What had better personality, the vet or the link? Well, the vet had more personality. I mean, the vet was just, I mean. Damn, the you know, link, it's no love. I've asked everybody. Nah, I mean, they go, the, the link, it's no love. Now, you know, going to see a game, of course, I'd rather see it in the link. Really, I, you know, because it's more comfortable. But if you want to talk about intimidating the other team. Oh, yeah. And having them come in and, and they're going like, oh, man, we got to get out of here, man. <laughs> Hey Gary, they that didn't like playing rip in the middle of the in the middle of the carpet. And then when you go downstairs to those locker rooms, I'm like, hey man, this is like, I, why do I feel like I'm at Rikers Island here, man? Hey, hey, <laughs> hey and, and you could run into a, you know a few rats and cats and all kind of stuff down there. You're gonna see. So it, it definitely is the kind of thing where the guys go like, man, let's play this game and get out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course. You, the fans, they greet they greet the, the other bus. Somehow they must give out some kind of information of when the bus is coming in. This is what it's going to look like. Because they'll egg the bus, and and they're waiting for the other team to get off. They're yelling stuff at them. You know, the, the lowest stuff they can yell, you know. They're gonna Wait a minute. They egg the buses? That's right. 
<laughs> yeah. And, 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 and they could be they're gonna yell the the, uh, the the worst stuff they can yell, you know. They'll be they'll be going after people's kids and, and saying stuff about their wives and stuff, you know, just to get under people's skin. <laughs> and Yo, I don't know where uh, the these evil is... fans come from, but some of them, you know, they, they know how to get under people's skin, man. Absolutely. Gary, I love you, man. Thank you so much for doing this, brother. All right, have a good one. You got it, man. So wait a minute, you guys egg the buses. So you egg the opponent's buses. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, I, I posted a picture when they knocked the vet down. A friend of mine sent it to me when they knocked the vet down. I got it on my, my Twitter page. Um, everyone's like, hey, man, that, that's like, the, the, hey, that rubble is, is like the ruins in Greece. Okay. Holy cow. Mick, Mike Maselli just announced he's leaving 97.5 today. It was his last show. Wow. That's a Joe Bell special, baby. You can bet your ass on that one. That's a Joe Bell special. Had to be money. Holy cow, man. Hey, friends, hang on a little bit more tidbit here. Oh yeah, that's a that's a Beasley special. That's how they do you. They usually would wait till Friday. Oh yeah, losing money. That's a Joe Bell special, baby. Same guy was my boss in Miami. Hey, Don. <laughs> you don't think he's getting a morning show at WIP, do you? Hey, uh, he, hey, my friends at Morgan and Morgan, where the fee is free. That means this, they don't get paid unless you do, my friends. If you're hurt or injured on the job, finding that attorney is one of the most important things that you can possibly do. And at Morgan and Morgan, that comment, for the people, it's not a slogan. It is who they are. And for the last 30 years, who they are is collecting over $13.5 billion for their clients. Nobody does it better and nobody is bigger. Then Morgan and Morgan, they are number one. And so when you're out there and you're looking to get the fair compensation for you and your family, with the over 800 army of attorneys that Morgan and Morgan has, nobody's going to fight harder for you than Morgan and Morgan. That's right. Offices in Philly, New York, Florida, all across the country. Morgan and Morgan is going to battle for you because this is who they are and what they do, folks. Look, the call is free. 800-512-1600. That's 800-512-1600. The consultation is free. Remember, size matters. There's no such thing as a fender bender at Morgan & Morgan. Open 24-7, seven days a week. And when you call Morgan & Morgan, do me a favor. Tell them Big Sills sent you. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. When you're hit from behind in a car crash, the insurance company may try to say, you can't possibly be hurt. It was only a few miles an hour. It's simply not true. You see, here's the thing. Getting hit at 10 miles per hour is like falling off of this. 15 miles per hour, like this. And only 25 miles per hour, this. Injured, dial pound law. There's only one Morgan & Morgan. 